to hello everyone in this lab session i am going to design one rc phase shift oscillator using 741 open and for the design i am using the tina ti simulator So just follow the design and you can do it from your side. First I am putting the required components under semiconductor. Putting the op amp here. From basic tab. Resistor value I am taking 10k. And I am just copying this. Similarly, capacitor I am going to add that is 0 0.001 U means microfarad. Again, I'm going to place here and here. Okay. Now connect ground here. Here also you can take a common ground and you can connect them. This. This one. So this RC section is basically the feedback network. <clears throat> so as you know, the oscillator is basically a positive feedback system and it contains one amplifier and one feedback network. The amplifier is designed using operational amplifier here and the feedback network we are using that is the RC network. And the op amp is in inverting configuration that means at pin number two inverting terminal we are going to add the input here so this this one is the output and the output is fed to the input through three rc feedback network and this one is the feedback resistance for op amp and depending upon the value of this register r4 the gain of the op amp will change. Now note that to satisfy Wilkinson criteria, the total phase shift will be 360. Since the op amp is in inverting configuration, so it will provide a phase shift of 180 degree between input and output. So we need additional 180 degree phase shift uh, to satisfy the Wilkinson criteria. So <clears throat> this can be achieved by using three RC section. So each RC section provides a phase shift of approximately 60 degree. So three RC section will provide a phase shift of approximately 180 degree. So that's why the total phase shift will be 360. So this is the power supply of op amp. I am using plus minus 12 volt, pin number 4, the negative voltage is supplied. Be careful about this. The negative terminal of the battery is connected to 4 and positive terminal of the battery connected to pin number 7. In both cases it is 12 volt. Okay. So the circuit design is done. So few things you need to remember while designing the circuit. Uh, just uh, for example, uh, mathematically we can prove that. Uh, so this the uh, value of gain of the op amp should be greater than 29 to satisfy the Wilkinson criteria that is A into beta that is called loop gain. It should be unity and to satisfy that the gain of the operational amplifier should be greater than 29. Okay. 
So here, since the OBAM is in uh, non-inverting uh, inverting configuration, the gain is uh, minus R by R1. Okay, so here the R1 value is uh, this one, so 10K, and here it is, I have taken 330K, so the gain is approximately 33. So it is greater than 29, so it satisfies the Parkinson criteria. So the oscillation should start. Now you can check the electrical connection. So there is zero error, zero warning. You should check this after designing any circuit. Now we are going for a transient analysis from analysis and transient tab. So let uh, as generally this uh, RC phase shift oscillator is a low frequency oscillator. So the output frequency will be in a few kilohertz range. Okay, so that depends upon the value of R and C. So uh, let uh, I am uh, running this up to 100 millisecond. Now see, no output is coming. Yeah, so of course you have to uh, put the voltage marker here. So to observe the output, let I am going to observe output here at this pin. Rename this one. Let this is V01. So analysis transient. Okay. See the output is not coming, it is straight. So this is because it is a feedback system and um, sometimes the simulator unable to find the initial value of the node voltages and it is difficult to start the oscillation because to trigger the oscillation we need some perturbation of the input signal. So to do that, one thing can be done. That means you can assign uh, some initial voltage to any particular node. So here you can do it by using this initial condition block. Let uh, I am connecting uh, initial condition here. That means I am going to put uh, some value here, let one. I am. That means when the simulation will start, the initial node voltage of this point will be one volt. So it should trigger the oscillation, okay. Now see the oscillation is going on. So uh, I run it for a long time. That's why the waveform uh, is just a little bit dense. So you can uh, now see the stable oscillation starts from typically here. Okay, uh, so typically uh, after 10 milliseconds. So if I run it for a lower value, let I'm going to run it for 10 milliseconds. See, the oscillation gradually goes and uh, after this point, after a typically six millisecond or seven millisecond, so here, okay, so this value is seven millisecond. So after seven millisecond, so stable oscillation is going on. So I will uh, print uh, that output from seven to let eight or nine for analysis. So start display, let it is seven M. So now we are getting the stable sinusoidal output with a peak value of around plus V saturation, minus V saturation. Since the power supply voltage of the op is 12 volts, so uh, the saturation voltage is typically 80% of that. So uh, the positive magnitude is around 10 volt and negative magnitude will be around minus 10. Okay. So it is giving output. So let's calculate what is the time period for that. And for that, you can run uh, that uh, for a little uh, lower value let i will run it for seven to eight milliseconds only so that i will get a uh, more clear picture of that okay now put some cursor uh, to measure the time period so let uh, here at this point i am going to put one cursor let uh, yeah yeah and again this point i'm going to put another one cursor b marker c this is basically one time period the difference between a and b in the x-axis so it is approximately 170 microsecond so 170 microsecond means uh, you can uh, calculate what is the frequency so uh, just you can write here p that is 170 microsecond so from there you can calculate f so you can do it with the help of a calculator so it is coming 
1 divided by 170, that is 5.88 kilohertz. 5.88 kilohertz. So from experiment, we are getting this value. Okay. So now theoretically, you can calculate. So theoretically, it is uh, basically f equals to 1 by 2 pi root rc. Okay. Sorry, uh, f equal to 1 by 2 pi root 6 rc. So formula for oscillation, f equals to 1 by 2 into pi into square root of 6 into rc. So this is the formula to find out the theoretical oscillation frequency. So it will be closer to approximately that uh, 6.1 kilohertz or something. Okay. So this is all about the RC phase shift oscillator and its analysis. And now we can print the voltage at different terminals just to visualize the phase shift. Let's uh, put some meter tab here. So give some name V02. Put another meter tab here. So V03 and another tab here. So just uh, I will print output at different node voltage e04 and we can visualize the phase shift okay so view separate curve now check this is the v01 output at this open and v02 is coming here okay so v02 just check the phase difference so here the peak appears here and here the peak appears here Okay, so there is a phase shift. And uh, if you just check the V01 and V04, the positive peak appears here at this point, and the negative peak appears here for V04. That means for this signal here. So it indicates the phase difference between V01 and V04. So that is basically 180 degree. And the open will introduce another 180 degree. So total phase shift will be. 360. So that's all. So you can try it in your PC. And if you change the value of R and C, so of course the frequency of oscillation will change. And uh, maybe in that case, the oscillation will start at much earlier or maybe a with a delay. Means it will take some initial time to grow the to start the oscillation. So you should run initially from zero. And you should continue for higher value, then you scale your uh, decide your runtime to get the perfect output. Thank you.